Hola, que pasa mi raza? If you want to listen to the best Latin urban sounds, check out the Powerhouse Podcast. That's right, with Abe Cortez in full effect, kicking it live for me, for you, everybody. Keep listening to the Powerhouse Podcast. Okay, on the phone, ladies and gentlemen, with me is the one and only film director, entrepreneur, and community leader, Carlos Ortiz. Right on. I appreciate it. Uh, much love. Thank you, Wade. Thank you, Bill. Really appreciate you having me on. You know, definitely an honor and uh, a lot of exciting things going on for sure. So I'm Carlos with Zeta My Entertainment, right? I write, direct, and produce. I'm the chief storyteller. And we're just doing some amazing things here with our youth, our community, you know, a lot of synergy. A very exciting time to be a content creator, a creative professional, right? Um, AKA artist. So uh, that's what we're really focused on: education, mentorship, right? Being uniting the not only the Latino nation and the Latino community, but along with our other brothers and sisters, right? It's it's time for us to come together, right? Set aside our differences and see how we can create, not destroy. Okay, if you don't mind, Carlos, because a lot of people know know you for this and you know i gotta let you know this man's actually a filmmaker a video producer great producer but can you let the public out there know because a lot of people keep asking me let them know about mm -hmm. taco man and when you're gonna nice. you know, produce it and how you came up with the concept and really how'd you get into filmmaking oh cool so let's uh, rewind let's go back in time let's go in the time machine all right awesome so check this out so i was in middle school Right, kid from the hood, born and raised in East LA, right on the streets of East LA and South Central and, you know, just uh, Cali, right, uh, SoCal. So that's where I was born and raised. And then, so she asked me, she's like, hey, um, so what do you want to be when you grow up? I don't know, what you got? All right, what's up? What's the deal here? And then she's like, okay, well, do you want to go to college? And I'm like, uh, I'm sure, why not? I got nothing better to do, what's good? And then she's like, okay, okay. Well, we got the special program, smaller class sizes, right? People that, you know, want to go to college. So we put it in a special curriculum, college courses, career for college and a career. I'm like, all right, cool. Sounds good. Excellent. So um, they did this assessment, right? Essentially a career assessment, right? A questionnaire asked me my hobbies, my likes, my interests, right? Things like that. They tested me, right? We got to test you, see if you qualify for the program. All right, sounds good. Uh, so they printed out like this three-page career assessment, right? And there's probably a you know a couple dozen different film uh, careers, right? Uh, one of them is is attorney. I'm like, oh, right, right on. Okay, attorney, cool, cool. I used to love watching Doogie, or uh, I mean, um, uh, Perry Mason, one of my favorite shows of all time. Right? I used to love the black and white, this classic. And then. Um, I'm like, okay, so let's check it out. You know, what's what's this, uh, you know, board and attorney and all this, you know, really about. So the little research, come to find out, you know, they probably don't have the best reputation, right? You know, stereotypically in general, right? It's, you know, ambulance chasers, money sharks, right? That kind of stuff. So I'm like, okay, uh, you know, I got some other options here. Right? So another one is a doctor. I'm like, okay, nice. Doctor, they got a good reputation, right? Definitely. You know, it'd be good to have a doctor in the family. And then um and my sister was a nurse at the time. So I'm like, hey, you know, what's this you know, medical field all about? You know, being a doctor. Like, okay, you know, you know, come by, you know, do a little job shadowing, you know, introduce you to the doctor, 
kind of tell you a little bit about you know what he does and what he what it took to get there all right sounds good cool but come to find out you know i'm super squeamish about blood like you know diseases and all that i'm like oh man probably not me you know dealing with sick people and i'm like okay right on like, good reputation but no nah, just can't do it uh, another one is a uh, filmmaker i'm like oh man, what the hell filmmaker what the hell is that i have no idea born and raised in la though you know i know hollywood you know, grew up around those streets too and then I'm like, okay, well, let's see what this is all about. You know, let's head over to Universal Studios, right? So we go, and you guys ever been? Ever been there to Universal Studios in California? No. I wish. No, no okay. I haven't. No, all right. So they, so for those that have gone, right, and been there, they have like this little tram ride, right, like a little um, bus, like a little trolley almost thing, right, that takes you in the back lots and it shows you where the films have been shot classics you know like alfred hitchcock cycle right uh, and you know there's this lake and you know in the distance you see this little man in a boat right and then it disappears and you're like what the heck and then you start hearing the music da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, and then jaws pops out right so man it just it blows my mind you know like i'm like holy cow you know i had no idea you know that the, you know, television and film, you know, was produced and created, you know, I thought it was reality. Right? That's what I thought. Somehow, you know, maybe like a documentary or something, you know, I never thought what it was. But also I started realizing the power, right, of storytelling and cinema and media and all of that, right? So I'm like, okay, cool, you know, so, and I started thinking about it. All the things I wanted to be was because of, you know, film and television, you know, I even wanted to be a, archaeologist because of indiana jones i'm like oh nice you know but looked into that that shit was hella boring I'm like hell no oh hey i, I forgot to ask uh, can we cuss is that cool is it rated r or rated g no this is <laughs> this is up there in the podcast world where you get away with everything like joe Rogan. <laughs> all right on sounds good all right so then now uh, you know so like you know reality and the way you know things are depicted you know, on the big screen, right, on television, and the little screen, you know, completely different from reality. So, all right, all right, cool. You know, so I know what I want to be, right? Uh, and at right around the same time, you know, my other sister, she buys a brand new Ira Camaro, right, beautiful car of the year. And she's like, hey, man, let's take this thing on a road trip. You know, let's take this bad boy for a ride, right? So, you know, we drive from Los Angeles all the way to Cabo San Lucas. Right, Baja, Mexico. And it's like a 24 hour drive, right? So, like, it takes two days to drive down there. So, we're driving along there, right? And along the way, like, you know, I might have had too many slushies at the last gas station or whatever, too many drinks, but I have to go to the restroom, like, super bad. Like, oh man, I gotta go, I gotta go, right? And, you know, it's nice out there, but there's really nothing out there. You just stop to put gas and keep going, right? Just desert and all. You know, tumbleweeds and cacti. So I um I'm like, oh, I gotta go, I gotta go. And she's like, it's like, oh no, 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 you know, hold it. You know, we're only like 40, 45 minutes away from my next stop. And I'm like, no, 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 I gotta go. She's like, Well, you're gonna have to hold it. And I'm like, Well, you're about to have an accident in your brand new car. Right, pulls over. She's like, Oh shoot, get out, get out, hurry up. <laughs> So I jump, hop out, right, go behind this huge cactus, like ginormous, two-story tall cactus. Right, and as I'm doing my thing, right, I look down on the floor. In the middle of the desert, right, there's this book. I'm like, what the heck? And it's uh, Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Uh, you, guys read, you ever read that book, by any chance? Sure have, one of my favorites. Excellent. So it teaches me, teaches you or anybody that reads it about money, right? Assets, liabilities, cash flow, right? Just how money works, right? Uh, financial literacy, right? Financial education. You know, so it's a great book, but I got a saying out of it. Can you guess what business you read it, Bill? What do you think is my favorite saying or quote from that book? Oh, uh, there was so much in there. You know, I'll let you go ahead. <laughs> right on. So. My favorite quote from that book, it says, work to learn, not to earn, okay? So don't do anything for the money, 
right? Do it in preparation for your ultimate purpose, your dream, your goal, right? Like what you're working towards, that's what's important. The money will come if that's what's important to you and that's what you want, right? So that's really the beginning of me understanding how money works, right? Which is really important business. That's what I love about film, the film business and film industry, right? That it's art, commerce, everything just culminating and coming together, right? It's the ultimate art form, right? So I need to learn about business, right? Because it takes money to make money, right? It takes money and an army to make a movie. Right, you see credits at the end, man. There's like five minutes of credits, you know, thousands of people. It took thousands of people to make that movie. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I know what I want to be. I know what I need to do to get there. Okay. So flash forward, you know, back, flash forward and flash back from here, right? So we're playing with time here for a second. So that will flash forward from that time to the Great Recession, right, 2008. So I get laid out, right? So I, that's how I really figured out I wanted to be a filmmaker, right? Just, I was in it. I was born in the city of angels, right? Hollywood. So I always felt that's part of my destiny. All right, now, you know, go to film school, learn about film, you know, all kinds of stuff, right? Just dedicate the next um, 25 years plus, right, to achieving this goal. So that's where we are right now at this critical moment. but. Let's go back to 2008, right? So I get laid off, a great job, great benefits, great salary, all of that. But the Great Recession, boom, bunch of businesses wipe out, right? Uh, the financial crisis. So I go back to school. I'm like, cool. You know, I've been doing sales really, you know, my whole life. And then, um, so I go back to school and I get a great opportunity right, to work with a four-time Emmy Award winner. Right, takes me under his wing, teaches me his craft, right? His 30 plus years in the industry. Right, just amazing visual storyteller. So he teaches me about that. And, you know, get trained again back on software and hardware and film cameras, right? We're in the digital age. So it's changed the game, right? And really that's part of the excitement, part of the opportunity. Now, I mean, you could shoot your, your film, right? There's a, iPhone film festival, right? You can shoot a feature film on your phone. You know, there's no longer an excuse, right? You, there's a way for you, the, the, the access, right? The barriers have come down, right? As the price of technology has come down and advanced, right? So the cost of entry is no longer what it used to be, right? Because really it was a good old boys club, essentially, right? Dominated by certain people. Now, I, I end up reading this book, right, called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Have you ever read it or heard of it? I, I've heard of it. I haven't read it, but I have yeah, heard, of it. heard of it. Yep. So that book literally changed my life forever. Right, that, that's game over. Right. So in this book, great book, it's about philosophies and principles of success. That's really what it boils down to. Right? So this guy research for over 20 years, like 25 years, interviewed over 500 of the most wealthiest and most powerful people in American history, right? He wrote this back and did this research back in the 20s and 30s, okay? And which was amazing because the timing was perfect because of the Great Recession or the, the Great Depression, I mean. So I read this book, right? Phenomenal book. And my favorite quote, of the whole entire book is whatever the mind can conceive and believe, the mind can achieve. Right? So if you've never heard that before, that saying right there opens all the doors, right? It literally empowers you to say, you know what? It's up to you. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, either way you're right. right? Um, so you believe in yourself, powerful. Powerful stuff, right? Very powerful. Whatever the mind conceive and believe, the mind can achieve. So if you set your mind to something, set a goal, make a plan, and execute that plan, and never give up till you reach that goal, you can accomplish any goal in life. Right? So self empowerment, self improvement, right? Having the ability to do and create whatever you want, right? Utilizing the power 